By the end of this video, you will have a Unity project that is set up for VR development using XR Interaction Toolkit and you will have a build ready as well which you can test it out on your device. So let's get started. Hey what's up this is Ashay from Immersive Insiders and in this video you're going to learn about four things. First you're going to learn to create your new project and download the XR Interaction Toolkit package. Second, you'll learn how to set up your project for VR development. Third, you'll learn how to set up your scene. And finally, you'll learn how to create a build and test it out on your device. So let's begin. Now to create a new project, obviously you need to open your Unity Hub and click on the new project button here. Now I'm going to select the version 2021.3.6 F1. Now this is the latest version that Unity has released, which is an LTS version. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use the URP pipeline and I'm going to name my project as VR project and click on create and I will see you once it's done creating. All right, so we have our project open and let me quickly change its uh, layout. There we go. So now to download the XR Interaction Toolkit package, let us quickly have a look at its documentation. So as per the documentation for the version that we're using, that is 2021.3, we got to copy this name com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit and then go back to our Unity uh, editor, come here and go to Windows Package Manager and then you need to click on this plus symbol and click on add package by name and let us paste it here. You can manually type it out as well but I will leave a link for that in the description and click on add. So that should uh, add our XR Interaction Toolkit. So now if you are using some older version like uh, 2020 uh, point something or 2019 version then you should definitely check out our blog and our immersive insiders page wherein we have shown how to uh, how to download and install xr interaction toolkit for the earlier version as well now during the installation process you will get a pop-up warning saying that a new input system package has to be added so you need to click on yes which means uh, after that it's going to give you one more pop-up uh, saying that some of the interactions layer might not be there. So this pop-up is just a warning in case you're uh, upgrading yourself from earlier version of XR Interaction Toolkit to a latest version because there are a lot of changes. So this kind of tells you to make a backup before upgrading. So since ours is a new project, we really don't have to worry about it and just click on I made a backup. Go ahead. And now our Unity should restart and I will see you once it opens. Alright, so once the Unity project opens, here you can see that the XR Interaction Toolkit has been successfully installed and it is going to be of version 2.0.0 which is a release version. So this is right now the latest version. Now you might get an option to update it to version 2.1 but I would recommend you not to do so because at this point in time it's a preview package which means that there's a high chance that there could be bug and it could and the interaction might not work as we intended to. So which is why uh, I would suggest not to upgrade it until unless it's a release version. And then if you click on samples, we have two sample here. One is the starter assets, we'll import it and we have the XR device simulator, we'll import that as well. Now I'll talk about them later on. So for now, that's it. Uh, you can close it and with that we have uh, installed the XR Interaction Toolkit package. Next, we'll set up the project for VR development. Now to set up our project, you need to go to File, Build Settings and here you have a couple of options. Now you can set up your project either for the Windows, Mac, Linux platform or for the Android platform. So you'll choose Windows, Mac and Linux if you're uh, developing for something like HTC Vive, Valve Index or Rift and you can choose Android platform if you're developing for Oculus Quest or Quest 2. Now to start with I'm going to show you how to set up your project for uh, standalone devices using the uh, Android platform. So you can select Android and click on switch platform. Okay, once it's done switching, you can go to player settings and uh, you will have to go to XR plugin management and install the XR plugin management uh, package as well. Once that's done, you will have three options, AR Core, Oculus or Unity Mock HMD. We're obviously going to choose the Oculus plugin provider. So you will have to enable it and that's going to download the Oculus plugin that's required. All right. And once that plugin has been installed, we can go to player settings. And in here, first thing to do is to change the company name. It's default. I'm going to call it as Imin, which is Immersive Insiders. And here it says uh, the linear color space does not work. So we'll just switch it to Gamma. We'll say change to Gamma. There we go. Then you can scroll down uh, till you find this particular option saying override default package name. Right now you can't see anything. Just uncheck it and then check it once again. Now you should be able to see your company name and the project name. And we have to set the minimum API level to 24 that is uh, API level 24 
and we need to change the scripting backend from mono to il to cpp and we need to check the arm64 version so the rest of the settings can remain as it is we do not have to change now there's one more thing so suppose uh, you have your scene ready and you want to test it out directly from unity scene and you don't want to repeatedly build it put onto your headset and then test it uh, if that is the case then you have to go to xr plugin management select the pc tab over here and in here as well you need to check the oculus plugin provider so now you will be able to easily test it just by hitting the play button so with that we have set up our project for vr development next we'll see how to set up our scene all right so setting up a scene is really simple all you need to do is get rid of the main camera and then right click on a hierarchy window go to xr and select the xr origin action based so when we click on that we have like two game objects added the first one is xr interaction manager this has the component xr interaction manager now this component acts as a bridge between the interactor and interactables now interactor is something that you uh, it's something like a controller that you can use to interact with something else and interactable is an object that gets interacted with so for example if you have a cup and your controller or your hand is there so your hand becomes the interactor and the cup becomes the interactable so another object uh, game object that got added is xr origin now this has the component xr origin which takes about five fields so the first field is the base game object which is the xr origin itself and then we have the camera offset camera floor offset so if i open this game object as a child of it we'll have the camera offset and if you see here we have an option called as camera y offset and it has a value 1.17 now if i have the tracking mode as device and if i hit play now this value is going to get added to the camera offset it's going to go up by 1.17 which is an approximate height of a human so but i would recommend you not to choose it because uh, the experience might not be that great instead we'll have float tracking that's because we have already calibrated our floor on our device so based on the floor and the headset height the height gets automatically adjusted so we'll keep the uh, tracking mode as uh, origin and it takes the main camera and now the camera offset has three more component three more game objects the first one is the main camera which has the camera component and it has an audio listener and uh, it has a track post driver basically keeps track of its position and audio listener is like it uh, controls the microphone that's there and then we have the left hand controller and right hand controller both of them have almost the same components so the first one is xr controller action based so now this component takes in the input action references for example if i press my trigger button then it has to perform an action so once all of these references are added this component takes care of that so it will know when i have pressed my trigger when i press the grip button or the joystick or, or all the other buttons that are there with respect to the left hand and then if i scroll down we have the xr ray interactor so this this component it's kind it kind of takes two more component one is the line renderer xr uh, interactor line visual so with the help of these three components we will have a ray interaction so you can use a controller and there'll be a ray that is coming out and you can interact with canvas or objects and those kind of things so by default these are added and uh, here you can see that there, there are no references right like we need to go ahead and manually add it but that's not the case actually there's an easier way to do it so before we do it we'll just get rid of the xr origin and here you, we have imported the starter assets so you can go inside the starter assets and you will find that there are default continuous move continuous turn left right controller snap turn and we have different input actions so if i open my input actions and let us for example take left hand locomotion turn if i double click on it here you can see that we have the for the left hand locomotion turn if i open 2d axis so this is meant for mapping your controller so if you want to have a different path you can use it so for the left controller it's going to take the 2d axis and then assign it to turn and uh, for moving as well it's going to take the uh, 2d axis and then based on what you're using on our controller it's going to get mapped so action the whole idea behind uh, in default input action is like the mapping part so these are the key bindings that are pre-mapped that comes by default now if you want to customize it this is something that you can do but right now it's perfect we don't want to change anything from there all right so now to uh, make sure that all the input reference actions are added to our xr origin we need to click on uh, each one of them and say add to action uh, basically it's uh, adding it to the default so we'll select 
continuous turn and say add it we will add this one as default as well right controller as default as well and snap turn as default as well so we have added all of them as default but for some reason when we try to add uh, XR origin for example so I go here I add my XR origin action based and still you will be able to see that uh, uh, it, it has added uh, but sometimes it does not so left hand and right hand okay so here you can see that left hand has been added for left hand and for right hand also right hand, left hand has been added with, which is wrong so for some reason it's not able to differentiate it to correct that we have to go to file build settings player settings and in our preset manager beside right controller we need to put a, put a filter called right and for left we'll put a filter as left that's it so now if i right click here go to xr and select xr origin and let us see so the left hand has all the input actions related to the left hand and the right hand has all the input related to the right hand and we have just added the input now there has to be some way wherein the XR origin knows that the input is coming in so for that there's one more component that we need to add which is called as uh, input action manager so this manages all the input action or it knows when I'm pressing the key and the input is coming over here now this needs an action asset which we have over here so you can drag and drop it inside this perfect and finally we'll add a plane which will act like a ground so we'll right click in the scene we'll go to 3d objects and add a plane all right so now we can save the scene and let's test it out okay so before we can test it you need to make sure that your headset is uh, connected using link or uh, air link so i have connected using air link now if you're not sure how that's done then you should definitely check out this video and once you have connected to the link all you need to do is uh, press the play button and let me zoom in little so that you can see it both in the game view and in the scene view so here we go now i can wear my headset and i have my controllers so my left controller and right controller so it works so what you're seeing now these two rays are the ray interactor but you can't do anything because we don't have an interactable or anything as such so this is just like to test and make sure that our xr origin the input action managers and everything is working perfectly fine so now we can exit the play mode and now that we know it's working in the unity testing now we'll just build it once and make sure it builds perfectly onto your device so let's see how that's done all right so to build it we have to go to file and go to build settings now there's one small chain that we need to do we need to go to player settings and in here it's gamma we need to actually put it back to linear so earlier we had an open gles2 version which was deprecated now that was causing the issue so make sure that your color space is back into linear and here we have open gls3 close it and then make sure you have your scene as well then we can click on build and run and before building i would suggest you create a new folder called as builds and in here you can uh, give your file name i'm going to call it as test one and click on save now when you're building it for the first time it's going to take uh, quite a bit of time around five to ten minutes but the subsequent builds are going to be way faster within two three minutes that's going to be done so i will see you once it's done building all right so the application has been successfully built onto my device now as you can see here i'm casting my screen from my oculus headset let me grab my controllers and i can use my controllers and i can look around as well so this means that uh, the build works perfectly fine and we have set up our project uh, perfectly as well so with that you have learned how to set up your project for vr development and we know how to set up the scene as well now the building the project is really important step and that's because when you test it in your unity scene it works and most of the times when you build it is when you see errors now just in case when you're building you get some error try building it once again and if you still get error then it would mean that uh, there is some problem or some setting some player setting that's not right so make sure to double check that as well and if you're still facing some difficulty then do let us know in the comments and if you feel that this video has helped you then i'd highly appreciate it if you can leave a like and subscribe as well and there's one more thing uh, in the description we have linked a free ebook which talks about uh, the crucial mistakes you could make as an aspiring xr developer so if you are one of them then you should definitely check it out because it will give you a huge advantage over others and in the next video i'll show you how to set up a locomotion system how to use continuous move continuous turn and how to teleport as well so as always i will see you in the next one